In this Pecha Kucha presentation, I'm going to provide a review of the current Pecha Kucha educational research findings, the advantages and challenges of using Pecha Kucha in classes, and provide a brief description of how to create Pecha Kucha presentations. I'm going to use PK as the abbreviation for Pecha Kucha from here on out. PK has been studied in undergrad and grad business and psychology students, some distance learning classes, English as secondary language learners, uh, so basically all adults, no high school students or uh, K-12, but I think this presentation style can be used high school and probably in middle school. And many studies uh, compared traditional PowerPoint versus Pecha Kucha. Specifically, what they're, they were looking at is student perceptions of developing and giving PKs. What were the perceptions of other students and faculty thoughts and opinions about Pecha Kucha presentations? In all studies, students' presentation skills and abilities were better using PK than traditional PowerPoint. Students were more engaged in the presentations. They did not look at the screen. They had less ums, and they knew the material because they had to memorize it. They couldn't look at bullet points. Students had higher levels of enjoyment listening to and watching PK presentations compared to PowerPoint presentations because of the image-based content and the brevity of the presentations, but there was no difference in students' understanding between the two formats. Some other findings included improved critical thinking skills and students perceived that they knew the material better. Students increased the amount of time preparing for the presentation, which means students are spending more time with the information instructors are wanting them to learn. Good thing right there. This presentation style helps with student collaboration. PK assists weaker students who are partnered with more proficient learners to build their confidence, subject understanding, vocabulary, grammar, and presentation abilities. Some of the advantages were stated in the overall findings. These are improved student presentations, other students and teachers' enjoyment of presentations, students spending more time with the material. All these are good things and we should use this style. Additional advantages include the auditory and visual modes of instruction as students must focus on the most important information which creates extra class time for discussion and activities to, to support student learning. There are higher levels of student engagement with PK presentations, regardless if the presenter was a fellow student or an instructor. Additionally, faculty reported classroom environment has more energized during PK presentations. PK presentations can be modified to meet your particular needs. The total presentation length can be lengthened or shortened as needed or you can have less slides and change the amount of time for each slide. For example, you can have 10 slides with 30 seconds per slide, or 10 by 10, 10 seconds, 10 slides. Some challenges of using PK in a class is include students needing to be taught how to correctly do PK presentations. This takes time away from instruction because you need to model how it's done so they can see it being done. It takes students more time to develop and practice presentations because you have to memorize everything you are going to say because you cannot depend on bullet points or all of the words on the slide. I said this previously, uh, but this is one of the challenges here is the students got to memorize everything you're going to say. It can be difficult to find images to represent the material or topics to be discussed. It can take hours to find 20 appropriate images. Another challenge is being able to convey your points quickly and accurately within the time restraints or having dead space between slides. Another challenge is how to grade PK presentations. I find it easier to grade written papers than any presentation as I can provide clearer and specific comments in papers, whereas I find it difficult to do this with any kind of presentation. So it's not just PK presentations. 
in our classes, you'll be provided with information on how to develop a Pecha Kucha presentation. One of the more helpful guides is found in Paul Gordon's blog. I provided this link in our class. In addition, I provided an article by Hashi and Holland that gives you gives excellent help. Levin and Peterson recommend teaching students how to do PK presentations by showing them a PK presentation, like a recorded one, lead a discussion on the expectations in their performance, and have students develop and give low stakes PK presentations for practice. You develop and give two PK presentations. One presentation will be in front of people or live. This does not have to be formal like giving it at a PK night. The other will be re recorded presentation like this one. We will actually record it like I'm doing here. If you have any questions about developing or giving your PK presentations or how to use them in your classes, please let me know. If you are interested in doing some research using PK presentations, please email me. I'd be really like to partner with you on doing some research using PK presentations in classes. I've provided a summary of the main findings of PK presentation educational research. The main takeaway is that PK presentations can be used, as, used in classes. Teachers can use them to teach and students can use them to demonstrate their learning. Thank you for your time.